Well, next on Queer News Tonight, we focus on the legal rights and needs for the LGBTQ plus community. This evening, we welcome the famous attorney here in South Florida, Elizabeth Schwartz. Practicing law since 1997, she is a nationally recognized advocate for the legal rights of the LGBTQ plus community. Author of the book, Before I Do, A Legal Guide to Marriage, Gay, and Otherwise. Her firm equally works with straight and gay clients in matters of family law, estate planning, and probate, and more. And she has been at the forefront of providing crucial legal protections for LGBT families. She is also a legal estri- uh, expert for gestational carriers, egg and sperm donors, and is the author of LGBT Issues in Surrogacy. She provides training for trans name change and trans legal education training, plus LGBTQ plus competency seminars for other lawyers and judges. Elizabeth has represented both ends of the gay marriage spectrum. Elizabeth served as counsel on a victorious case challenging Florida's marriage ban brought by the National Center for Lesbian Rights on behalf of six same-sex couples and members of Equality Florida Institute seeking the right to marry and also handled the first divorce for a same-sex couple in Florida. Both were victories for our community. This evening, we welcome Elizabeth Schwartz to Queer News Tonight. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Alice. You have an amazing resume. I know you're going to blush. I'm going to make you blush. But my goodness, uh, from a legal standpoint, you touch uh, so many of the important linchpins of what is important to our community. Because uh, the reason uh, I was fascinated to um, talk to you Um, Much of the LGBTQ community doesn't realize that um, our rights expansion falls in a legal framework. And so the attorneys that think through the process to get us to uh, equal rights and defend our rights is via attorneys. And you're one of those linchpins right at the the heart of that. How does that feel to be that person? Well, thanks. I mean, I think uh, you're right. Many of the gains in in our community have happened in courtrooms and and, 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 in legislative environments. But I think it's equally true, if not more true, that that your audience has forced that change. I mean, in other words, conversations at kitchen tables and, and in classrooms and at the sidelines of soccer fields. I mean, that that's how hearts and minds are, are changed in, in sort of day-to-day reality. So I think sometimes we overly focus on, on these flashpoints of exciting court victories, because it is amazing. And of course, it's heartbreaking when we have setbacks. Uh, but it, it, I think the true champions of our movement are just folks who are telling their truths and living their authentic lives each day. By the way, happy coming out day. Well, uh, and that's right, National uh, Coming Out Day. Uh, and uh, one of the things that I think important, uh, let's start with one of those flashpoints, which is uh, marriage. Tell us about Um, Just kind of in a soundbite, what's your experience of going through marriage equality and the fight in the courts and and our ultimate victory in the Supreme Court decision? Uh, What what are your thoughts? Uh, It was an amazing journey, really sort of the privilege of a lifetime to be able to serve uh, with the National Center for Lesbian Rights and Equality Florida uh, as counsel on on one of those victorious cases, as you mentioned. It's... uh, I have to be honest, I never really cared too much about marriage and the institution. It seemed like this sort of bougie hetero thing that like, why do we want that? And <laughs> why can't we just sort of decouple all of the rights for, you know, so that all kinds of family constellations could could protect one another. But certainly, as you mentioned, as, as a lawyer who handles a divorce, uh, I've seen how just the devastating impact of not having any rights. Uh, and as someone who's handled a lot of estate planning and probate, what's hap- what happens when you don't have uh, your, your legal rights documented, uh, it, it could be devastating. You don't get to visit your partner in the hospital, you don't get to inherit, and you certainly can, on, on a dissolution, lose everything. So, so that's how I sort of realized, like, this is something that's really important to fight for. And after uh, some time has gone by uh, since, uh, since that victory and those big victories, uh, do you still feel it's kind of bougie and uh, a hetero thing? Well, I mean... I do think that some of the like the greatest perks of being queer are like that we don't all have to color inside the same lines. So we don't have to all be in these 
sort of monogamous relationships where we have children and like serve in the military and all these things. So we should have the right to do all of those things. Um, but but I, I hope we don't lose our unique, like our creative way that we are as a community. But no, listen, I, I, I'm, I married my wife after 11 years together and with absolute joy uh, to to have that commitment memorialized in that way. I, I wanted a, a part of uh, of your action was with uh, Equality Florida. They do amazing things in, in the advocacy of our community. Um, one of the things that we talk about a lot at Queer News Tonight and happening out television network and Hotspots Magazine is that we that our rights are not fundamentally first and always in may, in gay marriage. And, and when we talk about why it's important to vote in presidential elections or school board elections, frequently we hear from our community, well, we got gay marriage and that's it. We're oh. kind of done. And so being a principal <laughs> voice and, and, and uh, general on that battlefield, mm. what do you think about LGBT's reaction when they say that? It, it, it is infuriating. It is infuriating. I mean, we, we, marriage was, 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 a, was one stop in the in the in the one one battle that we won in in the war uh, uh, towards full lived equality. I mean, marriage helps some people with some things, but it's it's not the end all be all. Uh, and and of course, what we're seeing is the backlash to that win, and the backlash attacking the most vulnerable among us, principally trans people, principally trans youth principally trans women of color. I mean, we're seeing what happens when you give a community some rights and, and the folks in power don't like it. I mean, we have we have so much more work to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are, so, there are so many ways in which we need the, the, the full engagement of everyone in our community, of everyone in your audience. They need to understand that, that marriage is fantastic for, for lots of us for some things. And there are plenty of folks who are single, who are coloring outside the lines in a million other ways, and marriage doesn't help them. It's critical. We need to have the right. As I say, I, 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 I got on the bandwagon and I'm like, oh yes, we need to get this right. right. And it's super important. And I also understand that it's, that it's, that it's part of, of our fight, but it's not the whole thing. It's, uh, well, I'm well heard. It lands on me well. Um, it's also part of the reason why, um, as I read about you, I was so fascinated. And you had the first divorce case uh, for uh, LGBT in Florida. And we even say in our introduction of you, that was a victory. We have a right to get divorced. Absolutely. We should we should be able to get into and out of our relationships. And, and frankly, we need to have rights as we leave our relationships so we don't leave everything behind. Yes. Yeah. So that's, it, and it's, it's I don't. Sameness matters. It yeah. It should be the same for everyone. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I always love how people say like, oh yeah, you know, straight people say, hey, welcome to marriage. Let's see how you like divorce. And, and you know, I, I always think that we'll just rent Innovate the institution of marriage the way we have so many of our neighborhoods, you know, just make it much more fabulous and more fair, fabulous. egalitarian. And was the divorce fabulous in your representation? Uh, yeah, absolutely, it was. It was. I, I started doing divorces uh, even before our ban against uh, the freedom to marry was lifted. Mm -hmm. uh, I had some very fair minded judges who understood that it was the right thing to do to grant the dissolution of marriage. Yeah. Uh, and um, and it, it, I think it allows people to close out a chapter yeah. of their lives that is not working. Um, I, I love healthily. that you've started and ended in the marriage uh, process. <laughs> I love that sound bite. Um, uh, let's, uh, let's talk about some of the other things that are really important uh, for legal uh, issues in the community. I met you at, uh, at a trans conference yes. uh, where you... Uh, we're helping um, uh, the trans community on uh, something that should be so simple, yes. name change. Yeah. Um, we have watched the trans community become uh, the, the bullseye mm. for the radical right mm -hmm. uh, to make Radical wrong, as yes, I said. Yes, <laughs> uh, exactly. Uh, radical crazy. Yes. My friend yes. Tucker Carlson and Laura Ingram, oh. and I say that as liberally and yes. as silly. <laughs> as I possibly can. Um, but we are seeing the trans community be ground zero for the 2022 midterms. Yeah. Um, what motivates your actions and, and to help educate other attorneys and, and judges uh, to uh, stand up in the, the rights for the trans community? What's your motivation for that? We all get beaten up in the alleys for the same reasons. It's not because I'm holding my wife's hand. It's because in some way my gender expression is threatening to people. They don't see me in 
high heels and 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 full makeup. Although because I'm on the television today, I have some more makeup. So so I'm perhaps a little more gender conforming today. So whatever. Okay. <laughs> But otherwise, when I'm not in my in my lawyer drag, um, I, I seriously we 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 get we get we're, if we're gender nonconforming, that's threatening to people. Men who are somehow more Nelly, women who are more Butch. It's th that is we are all one in 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 this on this spectrum of of gender identity. We all have a gender identity, and for and for most of us, it is it is does not conform with the gender stereotypes that that let's say we were brought up with. Those of those of us who are who are not Gen Xers and Gen no, I'm Gen Xer, Gen Z, whatever this new thing, millennial, whatever. Anyway, um, the point is that I I try to convey to folks that that there is a reason that you know transgender non-binary folks are 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 not only at the forefront of our, and we're at the forefront of our movement, right through the first bricks at Stonewall, um, but but also now are the are the the punching bags uh, for the radical wrong uh, because because they they are the most vulnerable in our community, even among our own community, even cis lesbians and cis gay guys just feel like oh well that that's really not us that's not those those people are not us they are us we are we are all question. transcending gender why do we not stand up why does not the l and the g and the b stand up for the trans community and the degree that you're talking about i mean i think i think on some level i mean maybe to be fair on some level it's a lack of familiarity Perhaps you know that to be the, to be most generous. Uh, for for very often when I would give talks, I'd say you know how many people know a, a, a gay person or a lesbian? They'd raise their hand. How many people know a trans person? And gender nonconforming. They're like nobody raises their hand. They don't know. So maybe it's ignorance. Um, but I, I I think it's just good old fashioned transphobia. I think that that a lot of folks think it's not terribly expedient to to have to defend this this community that they don't necessarily understand because just the sheer numbers, what is it, like 0.2% of the population is trans? So so it's just sh sheer numbers. People don't have as many folks in their lives that they understand that are trans, which is why, you know, incredible uh, uh, plural blazers like, like, you know, like um, Laverne Cox are so amazing who've been so out front describing their experience and living their truths and, mm -hmm. and trying to just dispel myths. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's really sad to see the way in which uh, in this current climate with the, uh, these trans bans against uh, doctors affirming, providing affirming health care and against trans uh, kids playing in sports, to see the way even folks who've been allies in our movement are, that for some, that's like a bridge too far. And again, that's just based on ignorance. That's based on people not understanding that once you've been on... So your point is that we've got to educate even in the L and the G and the B of our community. Yes. Mm. All right. Very clear. Um, something else I wanted to move on that is fascinating to me. Uh, we've got marriage. You're now at the forefront of family rights. Um, sperm, eggs, adoption. Tell us a little about, about your passion there. The minute that that same gender couples could form relationships, it seemed like they wanted to have babies, right? And um, in the uh, in, in, in this state of Florida, LGBT people couldn't adopt. Uh, there was a law that was passed in 1977 that said that you can't adopt if you're homosexual. And um, so, I was doing work with LGBT folks starting in 1997, as you said in the intro. And um, immediately folks wanted to to figure out ways to be parents. And uh, so of course I was doing lots of lesbian donor insemination cases. And um, and that, that rapidly led to gay guys wanting to become parents. You know, the, the minute that protease inhibitors and, and uh, antiretroviral therapies were passed by the FDA and, and our community started living, uh, they wanted to do this very, very radical, but also very traditional thing of starting to have kids. So guys wanted to start doing uh, surrogacy, and that was the only way for them to become parents in the state of Florida legally, because adoption was not on the table until 2010. Um, some cases I was also privileged to work on. Uh, so it's been it's been again just the a journey of a lifetime being able to help uh, folks become parents, and then also once the adoption ban was lifted in 2010, it meant that that same gender couples could both be legal parents. So like, imagine my partner and I are raising a child and maybe I gave birth. She's not the legal parent. 
So literally, I could just break up with her and leave and like take the kid, and right. she was a legal stranger. Mm -hmm. So um, once the adoption ban was lifted, we were able to confirm parental rights in those other parents, which was also really amazing and important. You know, in this area of uh, uh, the legal issues that fall for the LGBTQ community, I'm, I'm curious, what uh, what did you think uh, when Pete Buttigieg and uh, Chastin came out and, and the adoption of their child? What were I thought it was so perfectly timed. It's like, oh my God, I can't wait for him to run for president again because now he's got the kids. <laughs> he's like, ready. he's like, he, they're right out of central casting. Yeah. But what actually I have to say, so um, I don't know if you said this earlier, I, I do a lot of adoption law, I'm board certified in adoption. Option. Um, my first thought was, how did they get twins? Because twins are like very hard to come by in the, the adoption universe. So I thought, there's yeah. some lucky boys. I have jokes in my head, but I, uh, and for another time. <laughs> uh, one last issue that I want to explore uh, with you is uh, I would be remiss in letting you get away and not talk about uh, really, uh, as I frequently have said, a kind of taboo subject in the LGBTQ community, and that is aging. And uh, you are closely involved uh, with SAGE. And uh, tell us a little bit about SAGE and what you do with them. So I'm the uh, co-chair of the national board of SAGE, which is Advocacy and Services for LGBT Elders. And um, it's a 43-year-old New York-based organization uh, with affiliates in 32 states, I believe it is. Um, and, and, uh, and we focus on making the world a better, safer place for LGBT older adults. Mm. Why, uh, why do you think the LGBTQ community has a perceived difficulty uh, with aging or embracement of aging? Is it even a topic in the LGBTQ community? We're youth obsessed, that's for sure, uh, you know, and uh, and I think it's for some, again, to, to be generous, uh, I think a lot of folks are, uh, have trouble identifying with older folks because we haven't all been there. I think we can all identify with queer youth because we struggled in our youth and we, we've all been there. We can think back to our youth and we, we have this focus on wanting to make the world better for them. Uh, but we don't necessarily all identify uh, with older adults because we haven't all gotten there yet. Mm -hmm. And and I think it is. It's it's a bit of a taboo subject because it's we all joke. I mean, even you when you were saying, I'm going to out you by saying you've been practicing since 1997. Like, you know, I, I just, I'm good with aging. I'm turning 50 mm -hmm. in a month and I'm psyched about it. Mm -hmm. Cindy Brown is here and she's turning 60 in a week, a couple days five days. Happy birthday, Cindy Brown. Um, and she's good with it. We're not like, oh, don't say my age. Like, we're psyched to get older, right? Like, we're, we celebrate aging. I, I feel like, can she come up and talk? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, so, so, I mean, it's just, it's, uh, it, and I hope that that's something that more folks can wrap their brains around and, and, and appreciate that it's a, first of all, it's a privilege to age, as we say, beats the alternative. So much knowledge. So much knowledge. Experience. Vitality, you know, energy. The, Interesting. The, yeah. The, the, oh, absolutely. Oh, about me yes you are it's just it's not listen it's a heartbreaker like the the fact that that the the very the, the pioneers who built our community who got us to where we are so that we could have this beautiful tv show you know are, are are not all spending their golden years aging with the dignity that they deserve twice as likely to live alone lgbt elders four times as likely to live without children uh not have children and so there's a lot of social isolation and and a lot of discrimination experienced in assisted living facilities and those kinds of things so that's one of the things that sage does uh that i think is really so important is does that cultural competency An incredibly training. important work um elizabeth uh, my last uh, related question uh, uh of course if you're here in south florida and you need uh legal assistance in, in any of these areas, of course, uh, to reach out uh, to Elizabeth uh, Schwartz, but probably pretty busy and you might have uh, difficulty. In general, what would you recommend to the community uh, to, um, to the process of finding uh, legal counsel? Sure. Uh, for whatever area of interest. Right. Well, I mean, uh, thank you. I think that's a great question because folks deserve uh, competent counsel for whatever it is they need. Um, I'm always happy to refer folks out. I do a lot of, you know, the, the gay ambassador work and, and providing folks uh, competent counsel. Um, yeah, my practice is focused on family, family formation, uh, estate planning, probate. Um, you know, I, I'm a big believer in finding a lawyer that stays within their lane and and not someone who dabbles, not a door lawyer. So whatever walks in the door. Um, we have some great LGBT uh, bar associations down here. Uh, GLLN is here in Fort Lauderdale, um, the Gay and Lesbian Lawyers Network, and they have a great directory on their website, which I think is gll.org. Um, and then GALA, which is the Gay and Lesbian Lawyers Association 
Association um, in uh, Miami is affiliated with the Miami-Dade Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce, and they have a directory. Uh, the National LGBTQ Bar Association has a directory on their website. Um, and it doesn't need to be like a gay lawyer. It just needs to be somebody who's competent and that you're going to feel comfortable talking to mm -hmm. and who has experience dealing with your kinds of issues. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's super mm -hmm. important. Well, in the, you know, in the two years that we've done uh, Queer News Tonight, this is the first time we talked about legal expertise. Now, we talk about everything around uh, the important heart of, of as I said, uh, attorneys helping uh, propel our rights. But this is the first conversation we've ever had at Queer News Tonight. Shame on you. I know. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff me. to talk about. There, there really is. is. There's a, a lot. lot of There are a lot of issues that our community doesn't understand are, are, are intersected. Folks don't understand that reproductive justice is, is, is our issue just because we may not need to have an abortion. Um, it, 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 people need to understand that our rights are rest on those privacy cases, on the Roe v. Wade, on Casey, like they're, you know, these are our issues. Trans issues are our issues. They're, and so I, I would be happy to come back and talk about all of that and more. I can absolutely guarantee that's going to happen. Elizabeth, <laughs> thank you very much. Elizabeth Schwartz, uh, a real icon uh, here in South Florida. And uh, be sure and look up uh, SAGE uh, and, and the senior issues going on in the LGBTQ community. Thank you very much for being with us this evening. At Thanks, Queer Al. Tonight. Thanks, Al. LGBTQ plus news is vital for our community and for the broader world as a whole. We have enough enemies at Fox News. Tucker, Sean, and Lara are loud. We need passionate allies. Happening Out Television Network, Queer News Tonight, and It's Happening Out are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. Our community needs your support. Like this broadcast and subscribe now to ensure the growth of the entire LGBTQ plus community.